Eric over here is from Sam's Middle School. Uh, we went out uh, a couple days ago and did a testing and fitting. We're going to talk about that in a second with him. And then we said, hey, man, you need more kids in this band program. What can we do? He said, well, you know, PE meets here. I said, awesome. So he went and met with the principal, found where all the kids are, and now he's got a session set up next Friday where we're going to get to recruit to about 480 kids. Say you get 10%. That's 50 more beginners. That's easy. So the main thing is, next slide, check with your counselors, find where the kids are. If they're not with you, they're somewhere else. And those teachers don't want them. The PE coach doesn't want 50 kids in the class. The art teacher doesn't want 40 people. They want 20 people. The PE coaches want 20 to 25. Find them. Find where those teachers are. Work with those teachers. I've been at some schools where the PE teachers are the biggest jerks in the world for the first two weeks of school. Purposely. Because they don't want 60 kids in a class. Because they know if something happens, if a fight breaks out or something, there's nothing they can do. Mm -hmm. All right? So if you can get with those teachers and work with them, they can help push kids towards you in band. After those two weeks, teachers are great. But the first two weeks, they don't talk to them. They don't look at them. They don't acknowledge the kids. They don't smile because they don't want all those kids in PE. You want all those kids in band. So find where they are. Develop a 30-minute recruiting routine that you can do anywhere. If someone said, hey, in 10 minutes, I need you to come recruit at my school. If I have a trombone with me, I'm good. And even without it, I could probably do what I do. Okay? I have a slideshow that I keep in my Google Drive, so I can link to any TV and just have a background. It's really just a visual aid because kids need something to look at. And that's pretty much it. That's what I'm doing at his school. Okay? And we're going to take you through that in a little bit. I'm not going to just give you the what. We're going to give you the how. Why are you sitting over there? You can sit, over, sit over here. Come on in, man. Percussionists need to sit outside of everyone. Mr. Schwartz, may I just interject one second? What he says about the recruiting anywhere, be prepared to do it anywhere. They recognize you as the band director. I just did a recruitment at Lowe's while holding a garbage disposal. Um, so the student recognized me, the parents came to talk to me, and while I'm holding a 25 pound garbage disposal, I did a contactless fitting right there, recruited the parents and got the students signed up. So have a go-to phrase. Have things that you know you can do at any time, whether it's at uh, Zaxby's, or at Lowe's, or if you're just in the park, I promise you they will find you everywhere. He, I, I was actually in a different Lowe's. He texted me and said, hey man, I'm at Lowe's. I just been a kid for Trump. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, have a form that is counselor approved that says, yes, I want my child to be in band. Parent signs it. Is this good enough to, for you to do a schedule change? Counselor says, yes, you're good. Because if you go through all this and you get the forms and you hand it to the counselor and they say, we can't take that. Then what? Make sure if you're going to do a Google form. Hey, if the parents sign up on a Google form, is that good enough for you? You can add a signature field to the Google form, something like that. Okay? All those resources we have available to you. We have the Google form sign up. We have the PDF file. We have all those things. Um, like it says on here, one day of talking to every sixth grade PE class could easily give you 15 to 30 additional students. Now, you have to be willing to accept rejection because a lot of those kids aren't paying kids. So you're going to be talking to a lot of kids who don't want, any, don't want to listen to anything that you're saying. Don't let it hurt your feelings. We're used to having just the kids in front of us who love band and they're our kids and they love us and we're their, you start then, you're their band god forever and ever. All right? You're going to have a lot of kids who are just going to be, oh, this is stupid. doesn't matter. You need those 15 to 30 kids. You don't need 500 kids. You just want to get those kids and talk to those kids. So keep doing what you're doing, keep staying positive. Uh, click on that, you know, go back, click on that slideshow demonstration link. It's going to open up a new page. If you'll present on that, uh, yeah, just click present. So that's the top right next to share. Oh, I got it. Right here. There you go. All right, so this is uh, Kelsey uh, Bechtel over at Pro River Central. Last year they had 15 beginners, might have been less. This year she had 99. Okay, she and I went over, we talked to every fifth grade class, and we're going to just fly through this. This is my recruiting slideshow. I'll sh we'll share it with you, no problem. All right, um, let me get that one really fast. Trips, trips, no. trips. All right, back up one. So we're just going to walk through this real fast. 
First thing I do, especially if they pulled out of different classes like English or math, I say, I'm so sorry that I had to get you out of class for this. I apologize that you are missing learning for coming. And the kid's like, no, it's OK. Please, thank you. <laughs> All right? Then the first thing we do is talk about trips. Where's the high school band gone? Where have you gone personally? Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be your band. What have you done? I've done all these things. I've been all around the world because of band. All right, next. All right, we talked about band being the largest club on campus. If you have more than 57 people in band, you're bigger than the football team. You are the largest club on campus. Push that. Try to fight that band is the outlier. Band is the majority, not the outlier. Push that. Because kids want to feel like they're in something that other people are doing. They want to feel accepted. They want to feel like they're in a group. All right? Um, I push this. You feel lost. You just walk around feel like you don't fit in in the school. Band is the place to fit in. All right? Transitioning from middle school to high school, especially now at the beginning of the year. I'll do it next week when I'm with him. We are the exact same as kids. We all walk into a room. We look for someone we know. First day of school, we open the door. Hey! And then you go find someone you know. You all did it when you walked in this room right here, right? You looked around and said, who do I know? Who am I going to sit in here? Kids are the same exact way. Best thing about band, when you go into high school, you're going to have 100 to 250 friends first day of school. People walking down the hall giving you high fives, your other friends would be like, how do you know all these people? Because I'm cool. <laughs> you know? So I push that a lot. Money. I, I, go, I go right here. Who likes money? And all the kids raise their hand. I said, awesome. If you get nothing out of this, here's the main thing. If you are a band, you are a senior, you are virtually guaranteed, and this is for Mississippi, the goal, not always Alabama, you are virtually guaranteed full scholarship to any junior college in the state. That's two years of college for free just for playing your instrument. You don't even have to major in music. Kids are like, what? And you'd be amazed. You think only parents care about that? Sixth graders perk up about that. They really do. Okay? So I push that a lot right here. Um, okay, next. Can I be a band hand? Yes. And what I always do when I'm doing this, I'll, I'll do this. I, I'll ask Mr. Wicklin. Mr. Wicklin, sixth grade band, how many after school rehearsals do you have? Zero. No, he didn't understand me. I meant the whole year. I mean, I, he didn't understand that it was the whole year. Mr. Wicklin, the whole year, how many after school rehearsals do you have? Two. Two. One in the fall, one in the spring before concerts. Yep. So you can do. Gym, you can do dance, you can do horseback riding, you can do all the stuff, soccer, everything you do after school right now, and band. Okay? Later on in high school, they're going to have to make choices. Because as you get older, things get more demanding. That's not your problem. You have to get kids in band. Let them make the choice, not you. All right? Let them make the choice. So get them in band. There are, there are no conflicts. All right, next. But I don't play an instrument. Perfect. We prefer you don't play an instrument, so we're all starting in the same place. All right? Next. Demonstration. Now, all you have to do is play a note. That's it. You don't have to be totally proficient. If you can play the first five notes on each instrument, that's a demonstration. You can talk about the instrument. I call the flute the shiny silver stick with buttons. Because that's what a kid at West Fordham said one time. I said, one kid said, it's a shiny silver stick with buttons. The second you pick up clarinet, they're going to go, SpongeBob! <laughs> they do it every time. Hopefully a couple of years that will be out of our system. All right, it probably won't. Um, model your instrument last. Wow, at the end. Okay, before COVID, and what I'll probably do next week, I'm going to bring two extra trombones. So they're not playing my instrument. I do trombone last. And then I pull up random kids. Why do I do trombone? Why do I do trombone? Slide. No. Why do I do trombone? Because that's the one you want the most. Mr. Rose, why do I uh, Miss? There you go. Miss Smith, why do I do trombone? It's because it's the one you're the best at, and it's the one that's going to be the best demonstration. All right. That's why I'm calling it. Miss Pitt. Pretty easy to make a sound on the trombone. Boom. It's the, it's the one that 98% of anyone you pick out of the audience is going to be able to get a buzz on that mouth. It fits every face. Unless they've got a super flute embouchure where they've got like an up, a lip in the top that goes up. But I teach them how to play trombone. I'm like, I'm going to teach you how to play trombone now. They say, everybody like this. And they all go, boom. And I look around. I'm looking at lips. We're going to talk about that in a second. Looking for someone with medium to full lips. And just go, like that. 
I pull up what seems to be, maybe, you pick like a popular boy. Okay? And I pull him up because you're because those popular kids are ready to charge you off. So the second he comes up, they're like, well, what's going on? Alright? They come up, I take him through. I said, so what's your name? What's your blah blah blah? We never met. Nope, nope, nope. And then I say, all right, go like this. He goes, Boom. I say, awesome, do that in here. Boom. Everyone laughs. Mm -hmm. I say, cool, now do it longer. Boom. He goes, Boom. perfect. Then I put the instrument on, he makes a sound, everyone just rolling out. All right, he goes down. Let me get a young lady. Make sure I try to get a guy and a girl. All right, pick someone over here, pick them up. They all do that. And then I, then I say to them, sorry, Mr. Rose. I say to them, all right. I said, we've talked about money, we've talked about trips, we've talked about everything else. But aside from all that, band is fun. I said, you notice what all you were doing while he was up here playing? Y'all were laughing. You went, you went, huh. So that's what we do. Every day we have fun in band. We do this for an hour a day. When band class is over, all the kids are like, oh, can we play another note? That happens in English, right? When English class is over, you're like, oh, can we read another poem? The kids are like, no. And Matt, can we do another problem? No! This is what we do. Alright? After that, how do I sign up? We talk about the forum, we talk about when it's due. I make it feel like, even if it's not, even if you have 15 kids signed up for band right now, and you have room for 100, I make it selective. I give it, you want to create a sense of urgency. So I say, we have 50 kids in band right now, we only have room for about 20 more. So the first 20 people that turn this form in are guaranteed a spot. Now the counselors normally work with us and they'll normally get everyone in, but we're only guaranteed those first 20 spots. So if you know you want to be in band, when are you going to turn this form in? Tomorrow morning. Right. First thing tomorrow morning. Create that sense of urgency with kids. Don't just say, if you want to be in band, turn the form in and turn it into your teacher if you want. Um, just kind of whenever. Don't. Create a deadline. Create a sense of urgency about your program, that it's specialized, that it's restrictive. It's the same reason why a kid would rather sit on the bench of the football team when he can be in band and play all the time. Because it's limited, it's special. Kids think if not everyone can do it, it's special, when really it's not. So you make your program seem like it's special, that it's limited, and only certain people can do it. And it, in their mind, makes it seem like, ooh, that's something I need to do. All right? And then I think we're done. Keep going. Keep going. Those are just reminders. And go, and, okay, so get out of that and go back to the other slide. So that's it. That's my recruiting speech. It takes 30 minutes. Demonstration instruments. I have fun with the instruments. Um, I do bugle calls on the trumpet to show without valves. Then I add valves to the play. The slide. I'm in their faces. All that stuff. Okay? All right. Um, I'll go back. Hey, it's me. I lost that. Uh, if you're going to be in uh, crown at the bottom left, right there. Yeah, it's about there. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, time out. <laughs> Mr. Rose, come on up. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we did this, once again, this is one of those videos, the contact list fitting. This is one of those videos that we did last, oh, sorry, lunch. Has anyone not signed up for lunch yet? We need to send them the order now. Put in, write down for me a sandwich or something. Um, all right, thank you. Um, we did a big video of push about this last year. We're not gonna beat that dead horse right here. We're just gonna briefly review it, talk about the benefits. You can go watch the videos. I would do it this way. I'm just gonna tell you. We showed up at, at Sims Middle School, Daniel and I, two days ago. There were 30, about 30, 35 parents there. Within an hour, we had talked to them for about 10 or 15 minutes, had everyone fitted, and we were packed up leaving. Done. Not a single parent complained. Everyone understood the process, and no one played an instrument. It was, it, was, it was just beautiful. We're going to actually show you some of the stuff here. Okay? All right, next. Now, Mr. Rose has done this. Everyone, this is Zach. Hey, We're everybody. Saying, Hi, Hi, Zach. Hello, Hi, everybody. Zach. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, basically, what we're doing, we're looking at lips, chin, teeth. Uh, go to the next slide. Uh, let me, uh, Mr. Rose can take you through all this stuff. 
Okay, so the contactless fitting paperwork. Um, we made a really nice flow chart here. You get a chance to put the student's name. We have a space um, in the scoring sheet. If you can go over another two slides, please. Uh, go again and again to our score sheet. Again, there it is. So everybody can adapt this for themselves uh, for whatever it is that you need. But one thing that I have found, this is my third year doing the contactless fitting. So we did it two seasons ago, uh, this past season, and then just this past week. It is documentable. It is uniform. It is quick and everything stays organized. So with this form, you get an opportunity to document the student's favorite choice. You get an opportunity to document that you spoke to them about saxophone, even though they may want to play the trombone. Um, we get information here and then all of the instruments listed in the bottom box really give us a targeted area of what is most important about the student's physical structure. I want to play the saxophone. Great. I want to be six foot four. It doesn't always work out that way. And so what's more important, a 20 second instrument test where 25 kids did it one way, you do it again tomorrow and those 25 kids did it differently. Or the student's physical structure that stays with them forever. So in using the forms, what we're looking at is the student's face. We're asking them to quickly bite down, ah. We're asking them to turn, see the chin. We say school picture, smile. This form, gave us an opportunity to let every kid say their favorite, let us make a recommendation, sell what we needed them to buy, and then move on. And so whether you're testing 150 students or you're testing 50 students, everybody gets the same process. You don't want a student to go back to their English class and say, I got to try flute, drums, trumpet, trombone, and French horn. And a student say, well, I only got to be told I'm playing baritone. You don't want that to go home. So what ends up happening is every student goes through the same process. Every student gets the exact same interaction and the form keeps you organized. I have been in the blow into everything process. Taking six days, you're completely worn out. You feel like you just stood on the front lines of, a, of an artillery battle and you're exhausted. And now you've got to go have wind ensemble or marching band and you're getting ready for your show. This gave my staff an opportunity to breathe and still get the job accomplished. So one thing that we wanted to remark on here is that the uniformity matters. I am really, really nervous that a student can go home and feel like they were treated unfairly. If you've been testing instruments and fitting students for a long time, you can kind of feel what they need to play. But it needs to be what you feel like you can teach them. So Miss Pitts may feel like she can teach a certain student to play trombone because she could probably teach anybody to play trombone. Well, if I take my inability to teach trombone into the testing process, I might miss out on creating the next Miss Pitts. So this gives us an opportunity to look at faces. That is their physical structure. And then you can ask the student what's their favorite. And if it doesn't line up, that's where you become the salesman. The form says this. Other benefits, every student through your entire program now feels confident that everybody got to do the same thing and the parents always have the documentation based on the face. Um, and for those of you experienced directors who haven't seen this before, this is what you do anyway. Someone walks in the room and you look at their lips, you're like, oh, you're a flute player. Why? All this does is quantify it. It, it, the why is because they have a nice full bottom lip and they have an open aperture right in the middle even with their lips together. That's the why. Oh, you're a trumpet player. Why? Because they have medium or medium thin lips and uh, they can go boop. That's it. And probably when they smile they have a nice flat chin. You're a clarinet player. Why? Because when you smile your chin comes straight down to a point. It's, it's all things that we look for when we're fitting kids. So those of you that are new, this page is gold right here. Absolutely. These are examples of exactly what your officer, I did it the other night. When I did it the other night, I, had a par I told the parents to come behind me. And the parents and I fit the kids together. I said, mom, what are you, medium lips? She said, yep, medium lips. What about teeth? Teeth are even right here in the front. We, and the teeth are just worry about the front right here for trumpet and French horn. And then big overbites. We look at overbites and the sheet tells you like um, 
thin top lip, medium bottom lip. Yeah. So like, and if uh, go back, go back one page. Um, so here, no overbite for flute, because then that air is going to get directed down. It tells you everything to look out for, everything to look for, and a secondary confirmation. Have the students say poo, put their finger right here, and have them say. And if a small little opening opens up, you're solid. So everything tells you what not to look, what not to choose, what to choose, and a secondary confirmation just to make sure your choice is valid. And you can do that in about 30 seconds. This is year three for us doing it. I've done it in three different environments with three different counselors in three different student bodies. And all three times we use the form, we use the process, but we had to do it at different times in the day. So we can do this during the fifth grade elective in May. And you can get yourself into the fifth grade general music class and see every single student 15 at a time. Or you can do this in an evening and bring the parents in like Mr. Schwartz did at Sims the other night. And you can give of your evening and see everybody. You could do this on a Saturday morning. I prefer to do it in the spring where I see the fifth graders so that nobody sees them before me. And if I fit every student and I get to have that conversational time for one, two minutes with each kid, they show up at their middle school in sixth grade saying, I'm in the band, I play the clarinet, I need first period. And now you're in charge of your master schedule. So there are a lot of options of where you can do this contactless and the benefits are endless. I will never go back to spitting into everything, mostly because you see that student that you want to play trumpet. That doesn't always work out. And the student that you think couldn't play flute, Sometimes they surprise you, and this keeps us all honest. It keeps us all on a standard. I had an experienced band director say, you know, I looked at this, and then I realized I'm really good at getting kids to make sounds on any instrument. Right. But that's my skill. That's not their characteristics, and that's not their natural ability. That's my ability to teach someone who probably shouldn't play trumpet to get three notes on trumpet. All right, squeeze tighter, blow faster air, go, go, go. Yeah, I got you to play three notes. That kid shouldn't play trumpet. Look at his lips. He's got a nice full top lip. He shouldn't be on trumpet. No. They're stuck with their face. I mean, that's, that's the way it is, right? They are stuck with their face for their life. Make sure you put them on something that fits their face, not something that you got to them to do in 20 seconds. So here's my thing. The physical characteristics of the student are more important than a 20-second mouthpiece test to change my mind. All right? And probably, some of you probably could. So if you're still not convinced, fine. Use this as something to limit. Have someone at the door do this with the kids, limit it to three instruments, then they go back and test. You've cut your 10-person staff of testing instruments into two people. Still not convinced? Awesome. Do it your way, but take that sheet of faces and go into your seventh grade band and walk around. Who struggles? Who's successful? Look at the sheet. When I, we did a test run of this last, last spring, uh, Mel Morse up at Oxford said the next day he took that sheet into his sixth graders who, were, who he started that year, and he went, oh, man, yep, that's my fault. That's my fault. You shouldn't be playing flute. I mean, it was instant. He said I could see it right away. The kids who we put on the wrong instruments, we didn't even know. All right, so it, it works. We're done beating that horse. Let's go on. Great. Great. All right. Ready? Interactive. This is our percussion video. So, at, so we weren't expecting to have 30 people all at once. We thought it was just going to flow. Uh, so we had to improvise. So I took my laptop. I put it in the hallway. I lined up three chairs. I pulled up this video, which is on our teacher resources page for Andy's Music. There was also a video of Cam Roberts explaining all the different aspects of this, where he gives it to a student, and then he talks about what he's looking for. All right? You are now my upcoming sixth graders, you have signed up for band. We are going to do our percussion audition. All right, so if you will, please give Mr. Roberts your attention and follow the instructions. Hello there. I'm Mr. Roberts, and this is your percussion aptitude test. We're going to go through three portions and test your uh, flexibility, coordination, and your call and response. Please have a seat and follow along. We'll start by putting our hands out and I want you to move at your wrist, flexing it all the way up as far as you can get it and all the way down as far as you can get it. Just back and forth. Try it. Good. 
Now for the next part, we're going to roll our fingers in. So see how tight you can't make your fingers. See how tight I can get mine? Roll it in. Try that a couple of times and then see if you can hold it. Can you show me holding? Very nice. Now for the last part, I want you to move your wrist side to side like a fan. See how far you can't bend it left or right. Make sure you don't move your arm when you do this, just the wrist. Very nice. All right, let us move on to the next part. All right, next part is the coordination. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to start this machine and we're just going to listen to the beat. Once you kind of understand that the beat's not going to change, I want you to start by tapping your foot with the sound and keeping your foot going as much as possible. With your foot still tapping, put your wrist and elbow together and I want you to start clapping your hands together with your foot. Very good. Now we're going to begin clapping twice as fast as your foot. Let's try four times as fast. Very nice. Okay, pause for a second. Now I want you to clap in between your foot taps. Kind of weird, huh? Keep trying. Very nice. All right, last part is the call and response. In this section, we'll start out the same way where we have the machine in our foot, but the difference is, is I'll clap things to you in groups of four and you'll clap them in response. An example would be if I went one, two, three, four, you immediately go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Understand? Here we go. Here's the machine. And remember, we want to start tapping our foot. As long as we hear the machine, we want to tap our foot with the machine. Here we go. Wrist and elbow together. Pattern one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, and three, four. One, and and, and four. One, e, and, uh, two, and, and four. One, e, two, and, uh, and four. Very nice. Thank you for taking your aptitude test today, and have a good day.